All right, that's uh, that's interesting. That's also a question that I was I was looking into myself, given that that's something that uh, is very very important in the context of bug bounties, especially when you have you know programs where they're constantly making changes, as you said, to the code. Um, right. Okay. So uh, I'm just going to move on to my final question, which um, is a very simple question, but a, a good question nonetheless. One that I think um, is not really asked that much, but um, the question is, how should I start Windows reversing and Windows malware analysis? So they're very specific this time. Uh, and uh, please, uh, would you suggest a path to start with or, or courses to start with? Right. So uh, again, I, I have, you know, firsthand experience with this and I've pretty, I'm pretty much going to give you the same advice that I would give anyone. And um, it, it's very important that, uh, that these steps are taken seriously because in my experience, the, these are the key elements. So firstly, you know, you should be able to uh, to write some basic C and C++ code. And when I say that, what, what I mean is you should be able to write it and read it. So if, if you actually look at the C program, you should be able to tell the difference between a function, a class. Uh, you should be able to, uh, you know, to, to actually, uh, you should be able to actually tell the difference between um, between uh, whether or not a string or an integer is being returned uh, in, into a particular into a particular function or is being used outside of the function, and understanding buffers within C. So again, a good understanding of how to read and write C plus plus, and then of course the second aspect, which again is has helped me tremendously, especially when we talk about malware analysis and being able to uh, reverse engineer it is understanding secure coding, right? Now, when I, when I talk about secure coding with C and C++, it's, it's really important that you know this because uh, with most of the new products or programs being written for Windows, most of these principles are actually in place and you'll not find, you know, uh, buffers, uh, you know, uh, buffers that can be overwritten anywhere or within any program nowadays. So you need to understand uh, what code is secure, uh, how secure code looks or what it looks like. As, and of course, you, you should be able to tell the difference between a function that has been written with secure coding principles in place and one that hasn't and how they can be exploited, right? So that's a very important step. Um, the, other, the other important thing is having an understanding, a fundamental or rudimentary understanding of assembly and uh, CPU registers, what they are, what they store, what values they hold. Because when you talk about disassembling software or malware for that matter, you'll be dealing with reg registers quite a bit and understanding assembly at, at a low level, um, which it is actually a low level language is very, very important. And then of course, uh, you, you can talk about things like uh, static analysis, which is, is, is quite simple. It's, it's primarily just getting a fingerprint or understanding what this particular malware has in regards to uh, the static uh, assets and resources, um, uh, you know, also generating a uh, hash or a signature of that particular malware. Um, I would then recommend learning about debugging and, de uh, and debuggers. Uh, yeah, of course, I would recommend uh, the GNU debugger or GDB on Linux. It's a great way of getting started. You, it's really, really clear uh, and a very, very simple tool to use. The documentation is excellent. And uh, what I would recommend doing is writing C programs, uh, insecure C programs, learning about buffer overflows, and then taking them through uh, GDB or the GNU debugger and actually seeing what, what happens stage by stage. Once you, you, you're, you're familiar with debugging software and understanding exactly what, what's happening, uh, you can then move on to, uh, to learning disassemblers. So IDA Pro and uh, Jidra or Gidra however you pronounce it, understanding how to use these tools, um, how, how to use them to, uh, to, to perform uh, reverse engineering or disassembly. And the way you can actually practice this once you get started with these tools is by, uh, by taking a look at various reverse engineering uh, CTFs, uh, reverse engineering binaries that uh, I think one example of this is on a site called CrackMe's. You can actually take a look at this site. CrackMe is a great way of, you know, actually seeing whether you understand what you're doing, how to use the tools uh, that are currently out there. And uh, your job is to actually find a particular string or a flag within these binaries. And you do that by disassembling the software. So it's a great way of learning uh, about how to use the tools. And then, of course, to end off this question, 
when you talk about malware analysis, the best way to learn about malware analysis is firstly to read other researchers' analysis of a particular piece of malware. And you, you, you really need to do this because number one, you, you'll develop a methodology for performing malware analysis on a, uh, on a piece of malware. You learn about you know, the different stages, static analysis, dynamic analysis, and then of course, a behavioral analysis, and then of course, the classification process. So then you can get started with very simple and old uh, malware samples that you know have been discovered in the past. And you can see what, what, what you can find essentially. So yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say regarding that question.